is uh, to tell about their innovations, but uh, we have really asked them to uh, give us a quick snapshot in five minutes. So, uh, and for that, I must say, uh, apologize, but I will be strict just to leave uh, time for interaction because again, as you can remember, the objective all here is to find out what can we use uh, to move forward. Uh, so uh, we will have the three sessions, uh, starting with World Fish and Ikarda and Idama, and then we move to the second session. And of course, we will have a chance to uh, 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 answer questions and, and comments from the audience. The questions we've asked the speakers are the following three is uh, what are the opportunities and challenges because these are all uh, actors of innovation on the ground. Uh, how could these innovations help farmers and all consumers uh, to deal with the current COVID uh, situation? And finally, how could we, how are the partners, uh, what role can we play to facilitate the uh, role? So uh, again, as you all know the rules, uh, please keep your mics and uh, cameras off and uh, feel free to uh, put uh, your comments and your uh, questions in the chat and uh, we will open the floor for, uh, for discussion. And finally, uh, at, at the end, we will ask you, all the audience, to pick up your uh, one, two, three best success stories from what you will hear. So please pay attention to, uh, to all the eight presenters and, and pick up your best at the end. And I think this will uh, help us uh, have a better idea of what works and, and what doesn't. So without further ado, I uh, now invite uh, the first uh, presentation from the World Fish uh, in Egypt, who are going to uh, present uh, their success story about the tilapia. So uh, colleagues from uh, World Fish, are you ready? You can share your screen and, uh, and start and you have five minutes. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Rashid. You see my screen now? Yes, please maximize. Put it full uh, full screen if you can. Okay. My uh, presentation today is about climate smart culture of genetically improved tilapia. Uh, my name is Ahmed Nastalla. I am talking with my, my colleague, is Nabil Ibrahim Sinkarisa from Egypt. But this, this is work and extended for 20 years. So I'm representing 20 years and five minutes and uh, teamwork from World Fish Egypt and uh, HU. As you all know that aquaculture facing two critical issues. One of them is the limited resources of water and land. And the other is uh, most of culture fish species is wild strain, which it didn't express fast growth and this will affect on economics and profitability of agriculture. Climb uh, is for the foundation of land, water and land. We are discussing here two innovations together in one solution, which is the first one, climate smart aquaculture. Climate smart aquaculture has several advantages compared to traditional culture because it's enabled giving higher yield and to get higher unit, higher yieldable unit of land and water. And uh, the issue here was with the water. Water, water became a, a critical problem for aquaculture farmers in Egypt and many farmers in, in not only in Egypt, in Africa and Middle East. So we tackle this issue as we reduce the water exchange. And also this increasing production enabling for food security to meet the growing demand by, by population future. Uh, second, it's it produced high quality fish. Uh, this is meet to market demand and expectation for consumer preferences. Uh, also, it enables capture of nutrients to use as a fertilizer and this reduces the impact on the environment and either by security. On the other hand, genetic selection program, this is, uh, uh, this is a long process, it started for 20 years ago. And in 2012, we tested generation nine. We're now in generation 15, 16. We tested generation nine and we disseminated to farmers. The approach we adopted in dissemination, this is, uh, uh, you know, aligned 100% with the situation like we are now in COVID. So we take the strain from multiplication from genetic center bull in Abbasa to multiplication center, which is distributed geographically around the country. 
and multiplication center disseminate seed to uh, to hatcheries, commercial hatcheries in their uh, regions, and the commercial hatchery sells the seed to farmers in their regions. So we adopted geographical distribution approach to reach wider areas. Uh, the problem of this system is of climate smart uh, genetically improved fish is to intensify production only 2% of water volume in our bonds and this uh, means we crowding our fish in small area and we taking less this required less effort and, uh, uh, and to, to take care of them and easy to monitor the fish in smaller part of the bonds and at the same time it, this system didn't require water daily water exchange as traditional bond culture system in Asia and many parts of the world so this is really reduce water for aquaculture and this is quite strategic with climate situation problem we have and then this system enabling us to use smart technology to monitor water quality to monitor feeding to, to to surveillance or secure of the farm. So this is, uh, we can adopt good high technology to, to manage the farm. As we all know that fish feeding generate waste and this system enable us to take this waste outside. This converted the system to be climate friendly as will be less environmental impact. In the same time, we use this waste as a fertilizer for crops uh, and, uh, and plant for culture. So this is a double side, reduce the environmental impact and use uh, waste as input for other uh, activity and not only as a fertilizer to be used as a mesen. So this is very important to, to, for future uh, environment. Uh, this photo is here showing how, how it is easy to harvest the fish and to sell the fish alive to the market while they are alive and it's in very quick. And even it's enable us to harvest, do partial harvest, to harvest wherever there is demand. So, and when there is no demand to keep the fish alive in their system, no problem at all. So we could do partial harvest on request, on demand. And this enable us to integrate in digital marketing, to, to sell the fish and this cope very well with the situation, with the abstraction of marketing with COVID. So, some farmer have problem to sell the fish due to restriction of COVID movement. But Ahmed, using digital can you marketing... Please conclude? Ahmed, can you please conclude? Okay. You the system minutes. is economically viable and to, to, to scale up. Scale up and conclusion. This system is, uh, is, is can scale up in semi-arid area where there is water problem and water limitation. Such innovation in genetic uh, uh, genetic gain and climate smart enables us to get triple yield from 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 water volume area. So this is contribute to food security. Climate smart aquaculture providing good solution for food security, and finally integrated climate smart aquaculture with smart technology helps to improve system management and maintain system operating even in pandemic issues because you don't these need much effort and easy to control from from long distance thank you thank you very much uh, ahmed uh, now we'd like to move to the second speaker and uh, you would notice that uh, we have been easy on the first one we have exceeded by a couple minutes but uh, i think we need to uh, keep in mind that uh, the, the, the others who are uh, waiting also need to have the floor later on. So please keep your five minutes. The second uh, paper is uh, from ICARDA, the Arabian Peninsula program. Uh, our colleague uh, Azay Isabel Gassim will present on the using soil-less culture techniques in greenhouses and hydroponics. Please, uh, Azay, go ahead. Thank you, Rashid. And good afternoon, uh, everyone. Well, first, why protect agriculture in the Arabian Peninsula? In reality, there are too many challenges uh, facing the uh, open field, let's, see, let's say, agriculture in the uh, Arabian Peninsula. Two main challenges, let's say, can, can, no water and no arable land, almost. 
Arabian Peninsula also can be considered as an environmental uh, laboratory for climate change. Uh, I will uh, be very uh, brief. Well, uh, just to, to say that the uh, ICARDA program has uh, started since uh, 1997 upon the request of the uh, GCC countries and uh, Yemen. And by the, that time, they identify their uh, the protective agriculture as a priority, as a priority for the region. Uh, in fact, several uh, technical packages have been developed and uh, adopted to, uh, by farmers later on, including the uh, soilless uh, production uh, system, which really uh, uh, actually at least more than green, uh, 2,000 greenhouse only in GCC countries uh, are equipped by this system where we have uh, uh, at least 50% uh, of uh, increase of uh, water productivity for uh, all uh, crops and vegetables in addition to the other advantages of the soilless culture mostly, uh, of course, what, water saving and uh, the safety of the products due to the absence of uh, pests and diseases, or at least uh, with low risk uh, due to the uh, application of uh, an integrated production and protection management package. Uh, in reality, I, I will not go to details for the achievements in this field, but uh, I think uh, if I will share later on the uh, presentation with the attendees and they will find enough details on that. But I will go uh, directly to the, uh, to, to answer to the question uh, I already asked. First, on the opportunities and challenges under the COVID-19 uh, circumstances. Uh, I think uh, in the region and mainly in these countries, of, if you manage excluded from the, uh, let's say all the conditions are favorable uh, and uh, there are too many opportunities such as the awareness of the governments in the region about their food nutrition and uh, safety and nutrition. Uh, also during this period, uh, agriculture really is a vital, uh, seen as a vital uh, sector even under uh, confined in most countries, farmers are considered crucial. So they uh, can continue their work and uh, while maintaining proper uh, social uh, uh, distancing. Uh, there are uh, subsidies and incentives given by the governments, mainly to cover the establishment costs of the, of the soilless uh, culture or hydroponics, which is really a little bit uh, uh, high. Uh, all stakeholders, including uh, the farmers and the themselves, are now familiar with the ICT technologies and, and, uh, and easy to reach them. This is very important for uh, developing and uh, introducing the digital agriculture. Also, existence of uh, extension platform now in Saudi Arabia, and it is in progress in UAE. Uh, an incubator has been already established since three years in Bahrain and some student companies in Oman which can really enhance the, the issue of dissemination of technology practices already developed. Uh, regarding the main, uh, the main challenges, well, first, the food uh, supply shortages. The co uh, coronavirus is affecting the, almost coincides with the, uh, the harvesting uh, period of the of most of crops and vegetables. Uh, another issue is the most of protected agriculture crops rise in a few days, the example of strawberry, and a large number of uh, laborers harvesting. It's also a problem with impossible task during the social distancing. Uh, the post-harvest issues, also the supply and demand affect farmers in two ways, meeting the needs of customers and their own requirements for material, parts and supplies. And also the small farmers, our target of course, 
are not able to handle the temporary dips in sales and production. Uh, regarding uh, now the uh, how could protect agriculture uh, uh, help farmers or, and or consumers face disruptive impacts? Well, uh, first, but agriculture and greenhouses are well uh, controlled in uh, environment compared to open field agriculture. But agriculture is very important for food security in the Arabian Peninsula. In addition to the funds, for almost the, say, the, the second. Azayez, can you please conclude? Yeah, better nutrition, the use of renewable energy, or support. I will go to the last slide. How about the role of FAO and its partners? I hear the parts. I, I I think it would be ICARD and ICBA uh, develop product product uh, product agriculture system adapted to smallholder farmers include the uh, home gardening and uh, uh, let's say uh, around cities necessity to include necessity to include the product education under hydroponics and aquaponics and in more diversified farming system adapted to the desert environment of the arabian peninsula introduce digital agriculture mainly in the extension systems either smart extension system or ODK that ICARDA now is implementing in the region, improving the cooling system with the using the renewable energy we have already started, you, uh, and that uh, FO can support this, improving the cooling, I said it, and utilizing locally available materials, mainly in soilless media and fertilizers, uh, uh, enhancing or uh, providing the, uh, the technical backstopping in terms of value chain, post harvesting, and training and the capacity building of all st uh, stakeholders, including farmers. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Azayez. Uh, now we're moving uh, out of the CJR, and uh, our third uh, uh, innovation is uh, from Idama in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and it's about recycling organic waste uh, into products for hydroponics. Uh, so please go ahead, also five minutes. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Sabrina Vettori and I'm here as the CEO of Edama Organic Solutions. Edama is a Saudi-based startup with an international team from the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, KAUST. At Edama, we design innovative solutions for transforming organic waste feedstocks into valuable products for desert agriculture. Edama specializes in developing organic waste recycling technologies adapted to desert climate conditions, local waste type ingredients, and agricultural needs. Leveraging on our team scientific expertise and the CAOS core lab facilities, we developed input, input feedstock analysis protocol and compost recipes that allow us to maintain stable final compost properties while allowing for flexibility in waste inputs. Um, the we developed composting processes with reduced water use and cycle time that perform best in hot, arid climate conditions with ultra-high temperatures. And treatments for recycling challenging local feedstocks such as palm waste, um, date palm fronds. Uh, we also developed quality assurance schemes to ensure our product delivers stable benefits that address the needs of local um, farmers. We developed two main products designed to increase the efficiency of desert agriculture. Um, the first one is Desert Compost, a soil improver made from recycling food and green waste. It is used to build up and ameliorate sandy soils. Um, uh, this product was shown to significantly increase plant performance and yields by up to 40% and reduce water needs by up to 50% in our greenhouse and field trials. Desert compost establishes long-term soil health and can be used in regenerative agricultural practices and to reclaim desertified areas, allowing expansion of agricultural activities. Uh, the second product, what we call palm peat, is the first growth medium made from, re made from recycling date palm uh, waste. It is designed for applications in uh, the booming hydroponic industry and optimized for strong root growth and optimal balance between water holding and uh, drainage. 
Our mission at the DAMA is to create a local circular economy by recycling organic waste and transforming it into specialized soil improver products that can help farmers to grow more food using less water and feed local communities more efficiently, closing the loop on this vital living system. By creating a local circular economy, we will, enable to, uh, we will be able to establish more resilient food supply chain and reducing waste and pollution impact. This is particularly relevant during the COVID-19 as the crisis has exposed even more the fragility of our food supply chain. And because the COVID-19 has affected more severely areas with high air pollution. So let's look at these opportunities in more detail. Uh, establishing a more resilient food supply chain means uh, in the short term, ensuring a reliable localized supply of farming input products for local farmers. Moreover, our products will allow farmers to convert to more efficient and resilient farming practices, such as regenerative agriculture and hydroponic methods. And in the long term, this will lead to an increased food production and self-sufficiency in arid regions, decreasing the dependency on food imports for consumers. With our solution, we will also be able to reduce waste impact and pollution by collecting precious nutrients and organic matter from organic waste and looping back these resources into the food system to its benefit. And by diverting waste from landfill, we also eliminate associated air, soil, and water pollution and the negative impact on, uh, on public health associated with it. We conducted a case study to analyze the impact of recycling all the organic waste in, uh, in Saudi Arabia and calculated that will be worth 2.6 billion to our society every year. This breaks down into benefits for food and water security, environment and public health, uh, which were identified as priorities, the national priorities in the 2030 vision. Sabrina, can you please try to conclude as well? Yes, last slide. Uh, we started our journey at Adama about two and a half years ago. And we initially built our system and um, tech proof of concept, establishing our first pilot composting facility in KSA recycling about 70 tons of waste every year. And we're now officially in business, building a commercial scale composting facility with recycling capacity of 5,500 tons. In order to scale up further our production to national and regional scale, we're seeking help from the FAO and local partners um, to first raise awareness on our products and benefits for desert agriculture among the local farmers and ag agribusinesses. And second, getting access to source segregated organic waste in the food value chain. Because local farms, agribusinesses, food processing industry, local supermarkets and produce stores, farmers markets and so on are the biggest organic waste producers. And this waste is already mostly segregated. Um, with that, I will conclude and thank you, uh, thank everyone for listening. And um, please, if you have any question for myself or the rest of the team in the q and I will be happy to, to reply. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sabrina. Uh, that's it for the first uh, the part of this seminar. So we've heard uh, about uh, the fish success story. We've heard about uh, protected agriculture, and we've heard about uh, recycling of uh, organic waste. So now I'll ask uh, my colleague Jean-Marc Forrest, who is the regional program leader, to. Uh, look at the chat and uh, come up with a few questions. Uh, unfortunately, we have exceeded what the time allocated for this uh, part, but uh, we can still take a few minutes, see what uh, there are some key questions for, uh, for the speakers or comments. Uh, Jean-Marc, are you there? Yes, I'm there, thank you very much. And I think uh, uh, something is happening on the chat which is very useful is that uh, uh, the, the authors are responding directly to the question after they have made their presentation. So that will be very useful for all of us because it will, we will gain time uh, I, and you can uh, provide a very uh, specific answer. So I would suggest that uh, uh, as, as, as soon as you have finished, just like uh, the last uh, speaker said, uh, I mean, put your questions in the chat and you can start having a conversation while all of us can benefit from the questions. So actually the first one has been very active and responding very precisely to the questions that were about uh, 
uh, details about fertilizer crop, uh, uh, about the impact on climate change, and, and uh, uh, where the proteins that are used to, in the feed of the fish uh, uh, come from. So I don't think we need to, you, you can find the answer uh, on, the, on the system. Uh, for the second one, um, uh, there, is, there was a question, and I think this is a recurrent, uh, the, the, the financial or economic sustainability uh, of uh, this, uh, how much is it uh, related to uh, um, uh, relying on subsidies, and, and is it something that can be, is it something that can be uh, used in other countries if there are not, no subsidies? Uh, uh, same for uh, soilless agriculture. Then there are some comments, interesting, because the, the topic of, uh, of the day is obviously what does it mean uh, in terms of uh, COVID? So uh, how to handle post-harvest processing with so social distancing? Uh, clearly the post-harvest uh, and the whole processing in the, in the food chain uh, is seen as the, the major area where COVID uh, can uh, have a negative impact. Uh, one specific question, maybe uh, if uh, have, we have the time, uh, somebody asked, what exactly is date farm waste? Um, so uh, then uh, there were questions about uh, whether the, the um, uh, studies were done, but uh, that was responded after in the presentation. So uh, maybe we, we want to have a very quick reply from all three if they want, otherwise you can continue to respond on the, uh, on the chat, which is very effective. Okay, thank you Jean-Marc. Uh, maybe at this stage I would give the floor to the speakers again, but just one minute each, please. And pick up some of the questions that have been asked either in the chat of what you've heard, what uh, Jean-Marc has uh, synthesized, uh, just uh, a final comment of uh, some, of, some of those questions. Some people are asking uh, about the slides. Uh, don't worry, we will share all this with you. We will share the recording and the slides and everything with you. So uh, that, that will be done after the, the meeting. So starting again from where uh, World Fish. So uh, Ahmad, you wanna have one minute to reply to some of the questions you've heard or the feedback from the floor? Okay, so go ahead. That's a question. Some of the questions regarding to the environment. And you can put your uh, camera now so that we can see you as well. Okay. Yeah. Some of the there questions regarding to the environmental impact and climate change. And uh, we see this is a climate smart aquaculture. If we put FO criteria, we'll find this system is, is uh, applied to the same criteria under FO, FAO publication in 2014. Uh, regarding to the economics, we have done economic analysis for the work done in Egypt, but for, but for short term, and it's economically viable to, to follow this, this system, especially with, uh, with, uh, with the water shortage, which is coming more and more and more severe. So we need really partner support. I know FO is supporting, shifting to this system, and we need more support to shift to this. We need more support to uh, passer à ce système euh, en s'attendant à euh, une euh, multiplication euh, euh, doublée de la production euh, en poissons dans les quelques années à venir. Merci. Euh, to ask you the question about the scaling. Have uh, World Fish uh, been thinking about how to scale this in the region, North Africa and the Near East. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Okay, we, we, under project called TAT, we already start work in, in, in Kenya. And now under another project called ACLISAT, funded by IFAD, we're working in Ethiopia and Eritrea to scale this technology. And we're working with YOSIC to, to, for training people from Middle East in general. And they came to Egypt several times. So World Fish is contribution and open making this open source information for any trainer or any visitors to, to come. Okay, with. thank you very much, Ahmed. Now, uh, one minute to uh, our colleague uh, Azayez. You want to address some of the questions on protected agriculture or post harvest or uh, dot com, whatever. Please, uh, Azayez. Yes, sir. Well, uh, first, uh, there's a question about the sustainability based on the subsidies. Well, really, the subsidies are 
provided only in case to, to move from the soil conventional system to hydroponics or to, uh, to, uh, to soilless. And just to cover the establishment cost, which, which is a little bit high for some farmers and growers, mainly in Bahrain and Oman, not of course in, in, in UAE at least, and in Kuwait and Qatar. Uh, and this is, uh, as I said, uh, this will be covered really from the first year, mainly if the farmer is using the net house and without cooling system. This is, the costs will be lower and no energy or water, uh, uh, I mean, uh, costs. In that case, during the, from the first year, the, the farmer will, uh, will uh, cover his, uh, his costs. Uh, regarding the, uh, the post-harvesting, yes, this is really under the region, it's a very big issue that needs to be, to have more importance by FAO and its partners in the region. This is, this is the main issue, I think, now mainly with, uh, under these uh, coronavirus circumstances, how to improve uh, the post-harvesting techniques and to link to the market. Exactly, that's what I have now. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, there is uh, Sabrina. Do you want to have a final uh, touch on some of the questions? Yes, sure. Anything to add quickly, please, because we need to move on. Okay, so to what is palm waste? Um, um, from for palm waste, we really mean the um, the palm fronds uh, that are cut uh, seasonally from the date palms uh, uh, that are in the farms or landscaping. Um, um, so from a study um, conducted by King Saud University in Riyadh, um, for each pound we expect around 20 to 30 kilos of waste every year. And uh, um, this waste is currently a big issue in Saudi Arabia because it's very abundant and it's normally burnt, so it pollutes, it causes air pollution and it has no, and it has no um, commercial use. Um, regarding the uh, how do we save water by, by recycling? Um, here it's really about the, the products that we make by recycling the organic waste. Um, so both products, the desert compost and also the palm pit can be used, mixed into the soil, the sandy soil to increase its water holding capacity. Compost in particular acts like a sponge holding on to water and nutrients. Um, and In, yeah. in the chat, so it's easier to put okay. numbers in there. That's great. Now, moving on, uh, I think we're slightly uh, late, but uh, we'll start now the second team, which is on e-commerce and uh, how to link farmers to markets. And we have, again, three innovations there. We'll start from uh, here in Cairo, Fresh Source. And then uh, we have the chef from uh, Jaika, Japan, and Bashair also in, in, in Egypt. So uh, uh, our colleagues from Fresh Tours, are you there? Can you start uh, five minutes also? Try to keep the time. Sure, please. no, we'll keep it uh, short and sweet, so don't okay. worry. Okay, and to all the audience, please uh, make notes and uh, you'll uh, be scoring all these innovations at the end. Please go ahead, Farah. So thank you all for taking the time. I wish we were in, uh, uh, got to meet in person, but uh, this is better than, uh, uh, then cancelling it. So um, with Fresh Source, we started in uh, January 2019. Um, our goal, uh, much like uh, most of you, is to empower smallholder farmers. In Egypt, uh, these comprise around 90% of all the Egyptian land. So we, um, they actually contribute a lot to the Egyptian economy. And we decided to uh, build a mobile e-vendor of aggregates so we can connect these farmers to modern markets and provide last mile solutions as well. Um, so the co-founders are me and, and uh, my brother, Omar. We both um, come from different backgrounds in finance and he also comes in agriculture. Um, our team is very diverse with mostly uh, Actually, a lot of them were farmers themselves, and they worked with us to try to identify the pitfalls of the, um, the farmers, which are mainly lack of access to the market, lack of access to agriculture inputs, and um, uh, 
those 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 are the the main things we've been um had a, f a few features so i added these links in so that um anyone who's more interested to learn more can join um join our mission and basically what we've done for resilience in times of covid 19 is that we need to support these farmers um, as as much as possible so we're able to actually um, try to find them other means of sales rather than businesses because as you know a lot of restaurants have shut down so we're not able to um, sell their produce there so we need to find other innovative ways where we can try to um, sell their their products to manufacturers or exporters um, by um, how we are empowering them is that we're a lot of them are from obviously all of them are rural uh, areas uh, they're not really aware of the health implications that come with COVID-19, so they might not be taking the right precautions. So we work with them more as partners to bring awareness to them and to their families on how to um, try to keep this uh, issue to a minimum. What uh, we believe Sorry, that- Sorry, Farah, are you presenting other slides or just this one? No, just like, this. Okay, okay, good, go ahead, please. Okay, sure. So where we see uh, the FAO, uh, the major support is obviously they have a lot of information and a lot of um, just achievements in Egypt, especially with different uh, grapes, um, where they were able to help farmers to export. So I think we need to work with the FAO closely to get their expertise and to learn from them on how we can actually improve the caliber of these smallholder farmers to try to increase uh, their income. And uh, that's it. These are our social media uh, links for anyone who's interested to learn more about our source. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the keeping uh, to the time and presenting all the information. Thanks a lot, Farah. Now, uh, the second uh, success story is uh, the smallholder horticulture empowerment uh, presented by JICA. So, Jiro, please go ahead. Can you please maximize? The, yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, my name is Zero Aikawa. Uh, I'm a, uh, the JICA staff from Japan. Today, I'd like to introduce the SHEP approach. The SHEP stands for the smallholder horticulture empowerment and promotion approach and developed in Kenya uh, through technical cooperation project by JICA. Uh, which started uh, in uh, from uh, 2006 and succeeded in increased farmers' income, and uh, the uh, this is one of the F, uh, the national program by a Japanese uh, government. And uh, on your right side, uh, you can see that our Prime Minister Mr. Shinzo Abe uh, he announced to expand this approach uh, during a ticket uh, in year 2013, and so far. Uh, 120,000 farmers, uh, small scale farmers, uh, have been benefited so far uh, from 24 African countries. And this is just an uh, extension approach which can realize market oriented agriculture. Next. Okay, how to realize the market uh, the, uh, oriented agriculture is in shape is okay. The SEP approach composed of the series of activity, and we categorize the whole step, essential whole step. The first step is uh, sharing goal and the vision with the farmers. And the second one is the farmer's awareness of the current situation and the new information. And the third step is the decision making by farmers. And finally, the provision by uh, the technical staff for the, uh, the small scale farmers. And in this region, the uh, Egypt and the Palestine have introduced a SHIP approach. You can see uh, that from this side, uh, uh, even the women farmers in Egypt and also the Palestine, uh, they, uh, the women farmers enjoyed uh, to conduct market survey by themselves. And after market survey, the, uh, they are going to make, uh, they make a, a business plan and based on the result of the market survey. Finally, they received the uh, uh, technical solution, and they are very happy to receive that technical solution. And uh, okay, then this is the result. 
the both countries, the, uh, the farmers, uh, they enjoyed to increase the income, especially in Palestine. The 71% of the participants answered increase their income from agriculture production after this project. And uh, the Egyptian, uh, the women farmer, also they continue to uh, implement uh, their action plan and they enjoy their income and now they expand their business. And this is a concept of a SHEP approach and we introduce the uh, motivation theory, especially uh, self-determination theory. In self-determination theory, the, uh, it was said that we human being has the three fundamental desires, autonomy, competence, and uh, relatedness. In SHEP, for instance, the farmers themselves decide the crop grow and to, to, uh, to grow and make a crop calendar based on the result of market survey. This uh, activity support the, uh, the autonomy of the farmers and the competence and the skill and the, uh, techniques provided to farmers are very, very user friendly and low cost. Farmer can practice it immediately after learning. And related support is the face to communication between the farmers and market stakeholders are benefit to build a trust station. And the expansion of in, uh, the shape in this region is okay. Uh, Last month, uh, uh, second to fifth Can you of please March. Conclude, you yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we conducted first step workshop for Arabic country and the participant from uh, Egypt, Palestine, Morocco, and Sudan enjoyed lecture and discussion and field as you see the pictures. This is the last slide. Okay. As I said, that uh, the key point of our uh, methodology is to build a trust situation between farmers and uh, the market stakeholders through face-to-face -face communication. So honestly speaking, this circumstance negatively affected it. But however, the farmers who are supported by SHEP approach have developed their capacity and become much more independent and resilient. And the majority of them sold uh, their product at the local market very near. So negative impact were observed slightly better than farmers who engaged to export over long distance or dependent farmers. So shape approach is a mid-term or long-term support measure for small-scale farmers in the regions. But role, the JICA have to work together with the, uh, the development partner, uh, not only development partner, but the NGO and private company. And JICA uh, developed a SHEP game and uh, the SHEP test. Uh, you can uh, download uh, through the uh, online system. But the addition to that, we hope uh, it's very much welcome if digital solution supplement to strengthen linkage between farmer and market. We are very, very welcome if you provide us any ideas. This is the last slide, that this is just a reference. And if you have an interest, please visit our Facebook or the YouTube and game. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Jiro. And uh, the third uh, success story in this uh, part is uh, Bashair, which is also a platform linking uh, farmers to markets and suppliers. So uh, this is uh, from Bashair, our colleague Dora Fiani. Please go ahead, Dora, five minutes. Thank you. Do you Dora, hear me? We cannot hear you. Yes, now we hear you. Yeah, please go ahead. Now, good. Okay. So I realize that I've been following the rules uh, in a very strict manner, in the sense that I have really focused a lot on the three questions you have sent and not much about what we do. So I take one minute to, to say our approach to um, uh, the use of ICT in. Uh, agricultural innovation because we believe that this is important to um, to help all of you understand our approach to it and why we have deliberately adopted this uh, this approach our vision as knowledge economy foundation is primarily to focus on the small farmers and to uh, work on increasing their revenue and raising their standards, as well as attracting back youth to this sector. 
and our uh, and our uh, mission for I mean our approach for this is to consider that uh, ICT is the means to uh, provide access to knowledge as well as the means to enable the linkages and that's why what we do is combine Finding digital technologies to inclusive business approaches within agribusiness value chain strategies. So, oh, uh, Fatin, I suppose that Fatin is that that's not the presentation. Uh, I no, don't know if Fatin is on the line. This is what you shared with us. No, we've sent you uh, via we transfer uh, three slides. That's not these ones. Oh la la, we have a serious problem here. I'm really sorry, I'm back and um, we're trying to see uh, what has happened here, but ah, that's the one, finally, I, got, I almost got a heart breakdown, thank you Fatim. So I think we can go to the second slide. That's it, yes. So uh, what we, are, we want to present to you is uh, how do we approach the small farmers' challenges? So our starting point is to acknowledge that the size of the holdings and the lack of aggregation is disabling small farmers from developing their agriculture as a business. And our way to approach, is, to approach it is to consider that we should start by focusing on where the small farmers can do the highest level of income. And that's why in terms of marketing, we focus on the first step of the value chain, which is the section between the farmer and the uh, processor or the exporter or the retail chain. In other words, the ones who can buy bulk volumes from the small farmers and who are presently handled by the trader who is, as we all know, buying for one or two and selling for 10. And there are all sorts of trading weird things happening in literal the crops value chains. So, uh, we focused on that section in all our work as a key B2B step. Inshallah, we may have other funds to develop home delivery and that kind of stuff, but for the time being, this is our focus. And so we're using marketing and the absolute need for the small farmer to improve their marketing and through that, we bring in extension services so that the large businesses, exporters, processors, and so on, can then go work with those small farmers who have reached a certain level of readiness and therefore extension services. So each of our networks is based on this combination of marketing and extension services with the motto, good products, good marketing, good marketing equal good products, or needs good products. And we have also adopted a sectoral focus. We've developed first Bashair, by which we became known in the fruits and vegetables. We then developed the fish with our friends from World Fish. I'm very happy that they are there with us, to develop a smack net Again, with the same approach, combining extension services and marketing tools. And uh, we're preparing dairy. 
and we're going along that line. So as you can see, uh, we've now reached a coverage of roughly 140,000 small farmers. And an important point here, because it's as well valid for COVID, is that implementing the innovation required building awareness to change. In other words, getting small farmers to accept to change, which we managed through the use of mobile apps combined with multimedia tools and extensive databases. And we consider that the similar methodology and tools can be applied to meeting COVID-19 challenges and opportunities. Just before moving to the second slide, uh, two key components of success is that we need to bring to the small farmer what they cannot reach on their own, meaning linking and teaming with the key players. So we've developed very good cooperation with the Ministry of Agriculture, the Agriculture Research Center and departments in the ministry. And uh, we have as well build the same rapport with the key representatives of businesses such as the Agriculture Export Council because those are the key players in the sector and that is the kind of linkage small farmers need. Dora, can you please conclude? Fatin, can we have the next one please? Yes, can we conclude yes, please? Yes, I'll go very quickly. Yes. Yes, so here we're suggesting what could be the opportunities for small farmers in relation to COVID. One, there is a need of raising the awareness. Whether we like it or not, COVID is here to stay in a way or another. But there are two very interesting opportunities. Uh, use the raising, raised awareness to health and health food to start implementing food safety standards at the level of small farmers with traceability uh, tools so that we bring up on the market, in the domestic market, healthy food, branded, small farmer produced. And the same applies to the export markets. We're already working on this with the Bechet Pesticides Guide we've developed on mobile and the farmer's agenda. Quickly, maybe fat in the last slide. That, yes, that's my conclusion. It's the suggestion about what could be the role of FAO and its partners, which we really see as an institutional role. There is this absolute need to address the absence of proper broadband in rural areas and use of smartphones, because otherwise we never have innovation in agriculture, as well as financial inclusion and the a need to pull together all the players in this sector because there are many and we really have to stop working in silos. The last slides which Fatin was kind to add is the linkage to our different uh, uh, websites and uh, mobile so that you can see what we produce, it's all downloaded uh, free of charge and thank you very much okay thank you very much uh, dora now uh, i think we're done with the second set of uh, innovations so we've heard uh, from fresh source and from uh, chef uh, jaika and also from bashair i will ask again to jean marc uh, to pick up uh, a few, we are unfortunately running out of time for this session, but at least uh, maybe a couple of questions, key ones <coughs> for, for, the, for the speakers or comments. Jean-Marc? Okay, we are very quickly, um, it, uh, you, you can all see on the, on the chat that there has been a very intense debate uh, uh, that was more related to the previous session, but it's very interesting about the need to have a life cycle analysis and maybe to also look at these solutions together in a more integrated way. Everything is on the chat, very interesting. Uh, uh, so uh, the other uh, the other things um, I will ask I will say a few of the questions that I've read them sorry not all of them uh, they can rely to uh, um, 
some of the, the, the presentations uh, and not necessarily a one-to-one -one thing, and some, some are more specific. Uh, in terms of uh, a, a many questions about, okay, in these um, a, initiatives, uh, how much are we focusing on uh, women and on uh, how do we encourage the youth to, uh, to work more in that sector? Um, a, how uh, are farmers helped to improve the quality of the products? Um, then uh, some uh, questions, uh, uh, I mean, uh, do you work uh, with a farmer group, farmers organizations, cooperatives? Uh, some requests on details of delivery funding. Uh, and, uh, and then uh, in terms of uh, uh, more specifically to the, the, the extension uh, example, uh, what extension tools are used uh, and again uh, what is the, uh, how is the strategy to reach out to a uh, women farmer I suggest you pick one question and answer and the rest you can do on the chat again okay thank you very much uh, Jean -Marc. Uh, and maybe uh, commenting on some of these questions but also uh, if possible, uh, all the three speakers uh, to tell us a little more about uh, the current situation, the COVID. How is uh, the innovation surviving the current COVID and what kind of solutions practically can it bring? Uh, what's your insight on, on this, on the way forward? And this is the current uh, uh, COVID-19 situation. So starting again from uh, fresh source. So Farah, you there? Can you comment please on some of these or, or also on the current situation? Yes, for sure. So uh, what we've seen with the COVID-19 is uh, the biggest impact that we've seen is actually the two things. So firstly, Ramadan is a, is a, is a low season in, in general for fresh fruits because and vegetables because people just in generally spend their money on desserts because um, that's what they're used to. So that's coupled with the curfew from um, COVID-19 mean, means a lot of um, stress on the sales for of, of these supermarkets and of these retailers. And also stress on um, the farmers being able to deliver their produce on time before the curfew. There's a curfew between governorates now. So uh, the most thing that we've been able to help them with is uh, logistics. And that um, I think is going to be the, 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 mo the most thing that they need going on. Okay, thanks a lot. And uh, maybe a final one. Uh, what kind of, uh, of assistance can uh, the international organizations, including FAO, uh, help these innovations to, uh, to move on and scale? Any, any, any ideas on that? Uh, yes, yeah, so I've been uh, closely actually following FAO and a lot of our business model is based on um, the studies that the FAO um, undertook in, in, uh, in Egypt. Uh, as I mentioned before, they do a lot of, they do a lot of uh, really good work with um, enhancing the capabilities of these farmers and um, also uh, women inclusion. So um, I just would like to partner, see uh, like a public-private partnership on how we can um, achieve this together. Okay, thank you very much, Farah. Uh, Jiro, any uh, final comments? Uh, also addressing some of the comments from, uh, from the floor. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, as I said, uh, uh, this uh, COVID-19 uh, very seriously affected uh, uh, to our farmers. Uh, to, uh, I, as far as I'm concerned, uh, according to the, the voice from my counterpart who are still working together with the farmers, they said that our farmers are a little bit uh, the slightly better than the other farmers. Uh, the other farmers, they are still, uh, the, how can I say, the waiting for the, some service. But our farmers, they are independent and they sell their product at the local market and the short distance. So uh, still the consumer are there. So uh, the, uh, they want to buy the produce from the farmers. So uh, the situation is there. But uh, as I said, uh, uh, this uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, strictly uh, affected to our farmers. And I'd like to add some, one, one point of the, uh, the women's farmers. Yeah, uh, we supported the women farmers because the women farmer is very, very important. But in the, uh, the Egypt, uh, they don't want to sit together uh, with the men and female farmers. So we separate uh, 
uh, the training are there. And uh, the market survey is one of the keyword of the key activity of the super approach. So we, main, main farmers, they visited the market at the city center, but it's difficult for the women's farmers uh, to visit there. So we recommend them to visit the adjacent the neighbors and they surveyed. And the Egyptian uh, women farmers, uh, now they have a pottery or uh, the bakery uh, according to the market needs and they made a business plan. So we uh, have another uh, setup uh, for the uh, country basis. Yeah, this is my answer. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Jiro. And uh, Dora, uh, any uh, final comments, uh, especially on the current situation? Dora? Is, uh, I can see it's still there. Can you unmute? I'm okay. here. Yeah, okay. Go ahead, please. Uh, okay, because you were unmuted. Okay, do you hear yeah. me now? Yes, we do. Good. We do. Please go oh. ahead. So, well, I have uh, 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 several, several answers. Uh, one is that, in general terms, farmers continue to work uh, because they have no choice. Uh, the ones who have a so coming uh, season, prepare, okay. uh, well, they continue to work, they prepare the land, they go on buying the seedlings, and so on and so forth. So, in what concerns COVID specifically, uh, definitely, we need to address the need to uh, send them all the information, all the recommendations, as well as the facilities we can provide to them in what concerns their own health, their family health, and the immediate action they can take in what concerns their ongoing activities. But we have to be realistic. They are not going to change their ongoing activities because that is their money, uh, their monthly income. Uh, about the questions which came up for us, we use a mix of systems. We work with cooperatives to um, facilitate our access to the uh, farmers and a lot with the Mudiri Tezera who represent the uh, ministry in the governorate, but the contracts with the businesses is most of the time through types of contract farming we have developed and we uh, are now uh, promoting the setup of groups among farmers to join forces into uh, buying common facilities and signing aggregated contracts. We're doing this for the strawberries value chain, and we have succeeded in organizing groups of small farmers on that basis, because there is this attraction, which we have already started to tap even before COVID, which is the export market and the higher income from the export market, which does indeed manage to convince the farmers to do what they are not used to do, which is to work together. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. We both have... Yeah, thank okay. you, Dora. I think uh, you can also please use the chat to uh, answer some other specific questions if you want. And I invite all the, the okay. speakers to please take a look on the chat. And if you see there are uh, any relevant questions to your innovation, please uh, reply to that. And we, of course, this is an ongoing discussion. We are not going to solve it all today. But for the time we have today, we want to give a chance to everyone. So now, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dora and the whole team. Now, let's move to the third uh, theme, which is on uh, digital. We've heard already about digital extension somehow in the previous one, but uh, now we have two more to hear from. We have uh, Ahmini from Tunisia, uh, which is for uh, women farmers access to social protection schemes, and also ATC from Morocco. And I must say here that uh, presentations will be, uh, I believe, in French. So uh, please pay attention uh, And the screen. You have down uh, uh, an option, uh, basically, in, uh, in Zoom, where you can uh, put either French or, uh, or English. Uh, we are providing uh, simultaneous uh, translation. So uh, feel free to use that. Uh, to, uh, to translate. And now uh, I invite uh, our colleagues from Tunisia, Ahmini, uh, the floor is yours again for five minutes.
So, is Mr. Khalifi is there? En français? En uh, français, je pense. Bonjour. Yeah, bonjour, Meher. Please go ahead. Moi, je vais passer la vidéo. Uh, je, je suggère qu'on laisse la vidéo à la fin, si possible. Enfin, c'est à vous de voir, mais cinq minutes. Hein? Ok, ok. Donc, euh, euh, les slides. Ok. okay. All right. yeah, Donc, bonjour à, tout, à, à vous tous. Merci d'avoir participé à, à faire lui sur cet événement. Je suis euh, Meher Khalifi, je suis le fondateur de la start-up Ahmini, c'est Protège-moi la nouvelle connexion sociale. Ahmini vise à... Uh, founder of this start-up Ahmini to uh, provide social security to all women working in uh, agricultural sector in Tunisia. Uh, there was the initiative uh, by the ministry in Tunisia in 2016 showing uh, that uh, uh, a great part uh, of uh, uh, Tunisian women uh, don't have access to social uh, protection. And the... Maher, peut-être tu pourrais maximiser l'écran, s'il te plaît. Maher, uh, kindly enlarge the screen, please. Here. As uh, by law, uh, social security is uh, uh, a provision or uh, a requirement uh, in uh, public hospitals. Uh, and uh, this uh, was uh, the case of my mother was attacked uh, by colon uh, cancer. And I witnessed the suffering of uh, my mother and I lost her in 2016, uh, given uh, the inequality uh, 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 that uh, uh, prevailed, which uh, made me uh, change uh, this uh, unfair reality. The uh, appropriate legislations were necessary. And uh, the costly uh, procedures and steps, uh, these were the challenges. Our project uh, called Ahmini, it's a platform facilitating the access to social protection and acting as intermediary between rural uh, women and social security um, uh, department. Uh, after great efforts with the ministry, uh, we managed to have this uh, uh, possibility and now the rural woman has uh, her right to social protection in Tunisia and uh, women uh, don't need to go to the headquarters of the uh, national uh, department uh, in downtown and uh, bear the high cost because now Ahmini facilitates the um, affiliation and the payment uh, through this application and uh, we uh, gather uh, all women in rural areas we have uh, their their uh, contacts uh, and uh, uh, through this uh, technology we have this uh, uh, step of affiliation uh, that is uh, uh, finalized uh, uh, with a card uh, with showing the affiliation number to make the payment uh, by uh, mobile and uh, each woman pays by uh, through her uh, mobile phone the uh, possibility to uh, there is also the possibility uh, to pay uh, the contribution uh, and the fees in uh, closed uh, stores from where they live and uh, they can choose how much and how they can pay 
so uh, uh, they uh, save uh, the transport cost and uh, uh, through uh, Ahmini uh, 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 provide women with uh, uh, their right to dignity and uh, uh, guarantee their access to health care. Ahmini uh, has uh, managed to change the law uh, providing access to rural women to uh, social protection. And now we have more than 15,000 women affiliated to our platform. And we managed to change more lives and save more lives, uh, lives in collaboration with the ministry. And we organize awareness campaigns. And we are offering assistance. And now that uh, uh, give uh, that uh, there is uh, the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, there is no uh, possible um, um, uh, transportation between rural and uh, urban uh, areas. But uh, through this uh, um, uh, platform, uh, rural uh, women can send uh, SMSs that uh, can uh, be uh, actually uh, converted into a set of points at uh, the uh, food seller uh, points. And today we are planning uh, along with you our uh, inter, uh, internet uh, platform to save the rural women around the world. Thank you uh, very much for your kind attention. Now, let's move to the last uh, presentation uh, from Taysir and Kozumar uh, from Morocco. Sorry, say it again. Can I suggest to hear the last presentation and then if we have time, we put the video in. Would that be okay with you? Just to okay. make sure that we have a... Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, now let's move to the final uh, presentation from uh, Taysir and Kozumar. And then uh, please to uh, the whole uh, audience, uh, please make sure to comment on, on the eight uh, success stories. Uh, put the one or two, three ones that you prefer. You can rank them one, two, three, or just have uh, those that you think are uh, most relevant. Uh, thank you. Okay, so uh, our colleagues from uh, Ada and Kozumar, are you there? Vous êtes là-bas? I think it's also going to be in French. Oui, bonjour. Mariam, Saïda, okay. Please go ahead. Oui. Okay, je vais commencer. Je vais introduire euh, donc en anglais comme convenu et M. Shafiri va euh, partager la présentation. Donc, euh, hi everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you uh, for uh, organizing this important Good. event. Good, that's even better. Okay, go okay. ahead, please. Uh, and I'm uh, very glad to take part in it. Can you share uh, your going... screen? Saida? Uh, C'est Monsieur Chafiri qui va le partager. Okay, we're going to be two to present the TAC program and its positive impact, especially okay, in ahead. this period uh, of uh, when the COVID-19 is disrupting the world. Uh, Mr. Shafiri, uh, who represents the Cosimo Group, and uh, myself as a representative of Saida, Adam. we're uh, not hearing you. Hello? Oui? Hello? Hello? We are hearing you. Well, maybe it's just me. I cannot hear. Is anyone else? Can you hear? We okay. hear very well. Really yeah, we're gonna hear. We're gonna hear. Okay. All right, I will continue. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Shafi, who represents the Kozima Group, and myself as a representative of ADA Agricultural Development Agency, which is uh, under the supervision of the Ministry of Agriculture of Morocco. 
Indeed, the ATC program is undertaken by the aggregator, the COSIMAR group. The aggregation, uh, which represents an innovation that was introduced by the Morocco Green Plan, consists of a model, model of organization of small farmers around private investors or professional organizations to overcome the uh, constraints. For uh, um, uh, surmonter the constraints, uh, tout en assurant que uh, les agriculteurs agrégés ont uh, le, la possibilité de. Uh, also financing and as well as accessing to internal uh, and external markets. The Morocco Green Plan set mechanisms to facilitate and encourage aggregation by the establishment of the, an appropriate legal framework, uh, a law on agricultural aggregation, and a specific incentive system for aggregation projects. The aggregation projects undertaken by the Cozumel Group is one of the most important aggregation projects in Morocco, which concern more than 80,000 sugar beets. And, and sugar cane farmers, especially smallholders farmers, in over five regions in the Kingdom of Morocco. The project is also characterized by a global integration from upstream to downstream of the sugar sector and of uh, all links in uh, the value chain of this production. I shall now give the floor to Mr. Shafei to present a TCL digital solution and its usefulness in this period to overcome the constraints linked to the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, thank you. Mr. Shafi. Okay, thank you, uh, Saida. And uh, now I, I know the mistake when I was uh, muting, basically. So those of you who couldn't hear, you have to unmute original audio. Sorry, we're learning how Zoom works. Okay, Mr. Shafi, please uh, go ahead. Alizi. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Vous m'entendez? Bonjour. Oui, vous vous yeah, oui, 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 on vous, on vous entend. Allez-y, allez-y. Oui, oui. bah, je, je vous remercie pour uh, nous avoir invités à cet important seminar pour to parler. This, uh, important uh, seminar to uh, talk about uh, this important uh, aggregation and uh, the uh, project and how it was uh, used to um, uh, to uh, address uh, this uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Well, very briefly, I'm trying uh, to uh, scroll uh, the, the slides, but I, uh, I can do it. Well, uh, very briefly, again, I will uh, be uh, presenting uh, the COSUMAR uh, group uh, Unfortunately, I cannot scroll down the, the, the slides, or the screen. I don't know why, says Mr. Shafai. Uh, can you see the new slide now? Okay. Well, the group COSUMAR, uh, 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 works in uh, 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 raw sugar uh, refinery, sugar uh, beet and sugar uh, cane, has, uh, is working with 80,000 uh, uh, farmers uh, uh, producing uh, 5 million tons of uh, sugar crops uh, with 1.6 million tons of uh, white sugar production and 5.2 uh, thousand tons of uh, uh, white uh, sugar uh, export. Uh, we operate uh, eight uh, factories. Uh, well, uh, this uh, under this uh, role, uh, we have uh, tried to further develop uh, 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 on the uh, technical uh, and uh, the financial uh, aspects. Uh, as well as the uh, social uh, aspect uh, to ensure the social protection of uh, uh, farmers. The um, uh, digitalization uh, of uh, the agricultural sector uh, 
uh, concerns uh, the uh, upstream uh, part of uh, uh, this of the industry concerned with an investment of uh, 1 billion uh, US dollars over the uh, previous uh, 10 years uh, the dig digitalization uh, project is uh, uh, part of uh, this uh, action and uh, it uh, enables uh, the mechanization of uh, uh, this uh, system uh, for uh, 25 systems ag agricultural uh, systems uh, uh, with uh, uh, all uh, stakeholders including uh, farmers uh, and uh, uh, agricultural advisors as well as distributors in figures in 2019 uh, uh, we had um, uh, 54,000 uh, uh, farm cards. Excuse me, Mr. Shafi, if uh, uh, you can uh, please uh, uh, summarize. Well, in order to address the COVID-19 situation, we uh, have uh, all the transactions uh, done remotely uh, through SMSs. All uh, programming are done remotely uh, uh, from the order to harvesting until the payment. No physical appearance is required. And we have uh, uh, minimized uh, the uh, risk uh, of exposure to COVID-19 as much as possible. Uh, some uh, measures uh, were undertaken, uh, briefly detailed in the slide. And uh, we uh, adopted a, a social responsibility uh, policy uh, to ensure uh, prosperity to uh, everyone. And uh, during COVID-19 crisis, uh, the digitization uh, helped the, uh, protect, uh, the pro in the protection of farmers and in the maintenance of uh, sugar uh, industrial activities. And uh, the uh, uh, further development uh, of uh, digitalization and uh, the uh, reinforcement uh, of the uh, mechanization and uh, the digitization can be implemented and uh, disseminated in other countries of the region uh, based on political will. And, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, it uh, requires uh, the uh, involvement and the contribution uh, of uh, navigators. Uh, and uh, we can be inspired with the Altaïsir uh, experience uh, to uh, disseminate uh, uh, through uh, to disseminate it uh, through uh, the uh, national action of uh, Morocco um, under the name of Green Generation 2020-2030. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Chafei. Uh, uh, we are running out of time again. It's already 1.30, but I hope uh, you have all enjoyed uh, these eight uh, success story presentations as uh, much as we did. Uh, you can see a, a, a large panel of, of applications. Now let's open uh, the floor again, Jean-Marc, if you could uh, pick up a couple of questions uh, for, this, for the two speakers, and then uh, we take note from there. We see if we have time, we can show the video from Ahmed. Lots of, lots of lots of questions uh, lots of questions uh, uh, and uh, I hope there will be a continuation of the discussion offline uh, for the first one uh, uh, one question is it free of charge uh, one comment is uh, really it was very important to work on the on the legal framework um, and then one question given this uh, is related to the 
national social security, how reliable, how do they manage to make this app reliable, sufficiently reliable for an exercise like this? Uh, for the other one, uh, <coughs> a question on uh, um, are the, uh, how are farmers trained on this? Uh, and then uh, also a question that goes beyond uh, this specific application. What is the situation? How do small scale producers in the countryside, in the, in the rural area in Morocco cope today with COVID? Maybe not those who are not a, a sugar producer. Okay. I will stop. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Jean-Marc. Uh, I think uh, I will take the privilege of facilitation again. Uh, what I uh, suggest to our colleague Maher is that I will show uh, your video at the end to close. But before that, I we, we will give one minute to uh, Ada and Kozumar to uh, comment. Uh, would that work for you, Maher? because uh, you have, I think, a two-minute uh, video, and I think it's a really exciting story what's happening with Ahmedi, so we will end this Zoominar with that. Uh, so, uh, uh, if everybody agrees. Je vais, si vous permettez, je veux répondre uh, pour ce qui me concerne, pour la gratuité du système. Le système est bien sûr gratuit pour nos agriculteurs. C'est un investissement qui a été réalisé par Ouzumar, et dès que l'agriculteur signe le contrat d'agrégation pour faire la betterave ou de la canne à sucre, et le bénéfice de ce système gratuitement. Euh, la fiabilité, bien sûr qu'avant la mise en application de ce système, la fiabilité et la sécurité ont été testées. Je rappelle que c'est un système qui a été développé par les ressources internes de Rouvimar avec des sociétés marocaines, dont une start-up pour tout ce qui est application euh, sur le terrain. Le système est fiabilisé et reconnu par les auditeurs parce qu'il permet le paiement de l'agriculteur. Donc, c'est un système tout à fait fiabilisé et testé par les auditeurs à ces A viable and credible system. And it has been tested. Uh, concerning uh, the uh, training, it's a very important uh, aspect. Uh, all uh, best uh, uh, and good uh, practices uh, were uh, handled. And uh, for uh, ATECIR, uh, there were uh, special uh, training uh, sessions uh, with uh, farmers and uh, all uh, stakeholders, uh, as well as uh, service providers. Uh, 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 and uh, the uh, uh, input uh, providers, uh, because all inputs uh, are managed in an uh, integrated uh, manner uh, under this uh, system. There Merci, was, Monsieur uh, Chaffey. Merci, question. Monsieur Chaffey. Thank Je you, pense Mr. que Chaffey, ceux qui sont intéressés peuvent aussi think, uh, trouver plus uh, d'informations uh, online sur Cosuma. <coughs> Peut-être euh, peut juste une question très rapide euh, pour Madame Saïda de l'ADA. Dans quelle mesure l'ADA essaie de généraliser ce modèle sur d'autres chaînes de valeur, sur d'autres commodités Yes, uh, Mr. Rashid, I will uh, uh, reply in French. Uh, well, uh, actually, as I said, the uh, uh, COSUMAR uh, project uh, is uh, a leader in terms of uh, digitization. Uh, so uh, ADA, uh, under its uh, uh, strategy, where digitization is uh, uh, an important uh, uh, pillar, uh, we have a pilot uh, project for other aggregation projects uh, in Inspired by the successful project of Cosumar, and we will be having a research on the identification of needs. Uh, and uh, as aggregation is uh, an important uh, tool, um, so there will be a, a study uh, uh, on uh, the aggregation under the digitization at uh, different uh, levels. Uh, especially in uh, digitization that, uh, that we count on very okay. Uh, significantly. Okay, merci, Madame Saïda. And thank I want you, to thank Mrs. Uh, Saïda. also all the speakers uh, and all the innovation. I'm sorry, uh, time is lacking and we had all exciting stories, but I'm sure uh, you will have a chance to, uh, to follow up on some of these. Uh, 
in questions. Uh, for all uh, participants, please uh, make sure to insert your choice, your best three innovations from what you've heard today. And uh, we will uh, end this uh, Zoom webinar with a video from our colleagues uh, uh, Ahmed in Tunisia. And with that, uh, we will close the session. So let me just share the screen so that we can share, we can uh, show the video. And uh, thanks again for everyone for the participation. Conclusion to uh, this seminar, uh, finishing with the social protection and uh, especially under the current uh, COVID-19 situation, uh, I think this can be very relevant, especially if we can scale some of these innovations, not only the Hamini, but all what we've heard. And with that, uh, I would like to thank again all the participants and uh, all the r &E innovation team uh, for the work and uh, looking forward to uh, see you next week. Uh, most probably uh, the Zoom in our uh, third session will be on uh, digital extension. So we will go a little deeper. And uh, this is again building on all the material that was uh, prepared for the International Forum. And we look forward to, to uh, see you all next week again for the Thursday Zoom in our. And with that, we uh, would like to finish this meeting today. Thank you very much again to everyone. Thank you.